In this demonstration, we're going to talk about the Wushan KG-816. These days, a lot of the excitement and the attention seems to go to dual band radios, partly because FRS is a very popular means of communicating, especially with families when they're heading out on the weekend and want to talk to each other, and you get them so cheaply at all the big box stores. But the 816 really does still fill a pretty important role in our world of uh, mountaineering, search and rescue, guiding, AT skiing, and so on. Um, one of the main reasons is, although it's only VHF, so you're not going to be able to talk on the FRS, the VHF is still basically what you are using all the time when you want to get the repeaters through most of Western Canada. So what I like about the 816, it uses either a 1700 milliamp rechargeable lithium ion battery, but you can also get the AAA self pack for it, which is what I use on multi-day trips. And for day trips, if you want to go ultralight and just needed the radio for an emergency, um, like I carry the AAA pack and that brings the weight down to 154 grams before the antenna. So that's well worth considering because you will still get a full 5 watts of transmit power when you go that route. And uh, it makes it very suitable for professional use on multi-day trips where weight and performance are your critical factors. And if your intent is basically it's just in your pack to use for an emergency. And you can actually power that AAA cell pack with cells that you've taken from other devices that are with you such as your beacon, your GPS, your camera or whatever. So as long as you're gonna get your full 7.2, 7.4 area of voltage in the pack you'll get your full 5 watts. So just remember if you want to stick your um, you can put the lithium ion primary energizers in there and you'll get that. But if you want to put in your rechargeable uh, low self discharge batteries like the Analoops, uh, nickel metal hydride chemistry, you won't get your 5 watts out of that. So if you're a guide that often has clients that shows up with FRS radios and you're going to need to talk to them or you're part of a SAR team that needs to use a mobile crossband repeater set up at your command trailer, then this isn't going to be the radio for you. But otherwise, if you're going to go ultralight, I think maybe you're going to want to look at that. And then if you are, then um, you might want to go through the rest of this demonstration and see how to program it in the field. But um, in the long run, you may want to have a cable and the software to make your life easier. So let's get started here and move on to that phase. Before we start programming the radio, we're going to need to become somewhat familiar with the layout of the keys and what we're going to be looking at for getting that programming to work for us. When you first turn the radio on, it talks to you and if she says frequency mode then you're also what's known in VFO mode and that's like a scratch pad where you do your data entry get your frequency sorted out and all the other programming parameters so Wushan has produced this cheat sheet and after you've turned it on you're in frequency mode hit the little red menu button in the upper left hand side and that's what you'll hear and you'll be presented with this one right here the step and as you can see the frequency stepping in that was it going back to frequency mode by the way it only gives you this option in that amount of time and then you're back to the frequency mode display so you've got to make your choice before it defaults back there again so as we're saying your frequency stepping there is what you could get started with and if you want to make changes to any of these menu items you 
press the up or down keys generally and then make your selection. In this case it would be selecting your channel stepping. Here is um, menu save and that's basically setting your battery pack save mode. Squelch levels and then 4 is something that we will be dealing with in terms of setting the transmitting frequencies. So we'll be dealing with that and that will be one important one. We will also then moving on with our shortcuts you can see as you go through the menu system you'll be getting CTCSS, Vox, setting your receiving CTCSS which is probably not something that we're going to touch on and the transmitting CTCSS is something that we will need to deal with so that's going to be menu item 9. We probably don't need to set the side keys. Uh, you will be dealing with locking your P keypad. Sorry about that. That's a good thing to do. Uh, you can customize your auto backlighting then when you keep this is in the manual by the way 13 will be important for setting the offset power on message I like to know what my voltage is and so I set that as a default when I'm using the software for programming it editing the channel name is going to be another one that's important so make a note of that and put your highlighter over that your memory channel you will need that for picking the correct memory channel and then the last cheat sheet is um, those items 20 through 23 by the looks of it and that seems to be the end of what they give for the cheat sheets please keep in mind this is my first time doing any programming from the keypad on the 816 so I'm definitely no expert and a lot of this is going to be new to me and I'm working my way through it at the same time. I normally use the software and another note on that while I think about it, the Wushan software doesn't work on Windows 8. Uh, however, Chirp does. So when I'm on Windows 8, I use Chirp to program it. And um, otherwise, if I want to use the Wushan software, I go to the Windows 7 machine. So now we'll move on to a live view of the radio and work our way through some of those menu settings by dealing with them through the keypad. Before we get going with programming the radio, there's a few little housekeeping items that have to be looked after to make sure that a number of gotchas don't kick in and confuse the whole process. There's probably a few different ways to skin the cat. I'll just go through the ones that I've been using in order to accomplish my end. So when you first turn the radio on, one of the nice things about the way that it works there, channel mode two. she will enunciate what mode you're in. She said channel. Therefore, if I'm going to be programming, I'll need to be in frequency mode. I call it VFO mode. They call it frequency channel mode. So we'll need to switch over. But before we switch over, I might as well, while I'm in memory channel mode, look after my housekeeping in that regard. For example, if I know that I want to use memory channel 2 for the frequency I'm going to be entering, and I see there's already something in there, I want to get rid of memory channel 2 to start with. And to do that, it'll be going through the menu system, and the menu is the orange key here. Function select. When you hit that, and I know that mem menu item number 20 is the uh, delete channel menu. So I dial up to number 20. I hit menu channel again eight. to select. It gives me a list of memory channels that are flashing. I can dial through those. When I get to the memory channel that I want to delete, I will then hit menu again. Enter. And now that should have confirmed that it's deleted that channel. 
to go back to where I was, I just shortcut by hitting the push to talk. And One, three, four, five, six, three, one, five. You can three. see there is no more channel number two. So that's how we've cleaned out a memory channel in order to get it ready to have a new occupant in that channel number. Let's say we're going to be going down a logging road and we want to put in a frequency of uh, 155000 for that logging road. Now I'm going to move over to frequency channel mode which is again toggling between orange to green. So we go orange, green, we're in frequency mode now we dial in the frequency we want from the keypad or punch it in. So you can punch in 155000. You don't need to put the dot in, it automatically gets assumed after you've put in the three digits. And when you've got the frequency entered in there, we know that it's correct. We're going to store that into memory channel number two by hitting the menu Function button. Select. Then we're going to go to menu item number 19 by dialing 19 in, which is memory channel. We're going to hit the menu channel button. Memory. Now it's offering me a choice of memory channels that I can choose from. I dial in number 2, that's flashing at me. And now I'm going to hit menu again. Memory. And I'm not sure what she said. I hope she said I'm saving the memory. Uh, hit the push to talk. Now you're back on your frequency mode, which doesn't tell us in order of confirming that we got that memory channel in. We're going to go back over to memory Function channel mode. Channel by channel number two. And it looks like we've gotten 155 into channel number two. One, five, two, three, two. So we have now managed to get a simplex frequency with no other options into memory channel 2 and that's going to be your first step uh, come in handy when you get to the entrance to a logging road they've posted the frequency that you're supposed to be using and you can punch it in and then start using it so that is that um, process and now we're going to move on to getting a repeater frequency in and some of the other things such as tone codes and uh, wide or narrow band and so on into the radio. Let's look after another housekeeping matter before we go any further just so it doesn't get me later on and while I remember and that is that frequency stepping. If I'm set too high on that it's going to really inhibit my ability to fine-tune that last digit down should I need it if I am programming any of the uh, repeater frequencies for example that may require that. So I'll do that now, and that's just memory item number one. Function select. So um, stepping there on one. Step frequency. And when I hit menu again, you can see it's set on 12.5. So what I want is to have it down to a finer increment, which would be, as you can see, five is as good as it gets. Hit the menu item there and um, now we've looked after that stepping which should default for most of the future programming choices we try and make. We'll have to double check that. As I've said, this is my first time walking through which perhaps is a good thing because then I'm more prone to making the same mistakes that anyone else would the first time they're handling the radio. So that's that one looked after. And um, another one that uh, you may want to check on while we're in there is just setting your squelch level. And that's menu item number three. And note that I'm in um, frequency mode here. And I'm not sure whether it makes a difference when we're setting these things in the menu. I guess we'll find out later. But maybe just to be certain, I'll go over to frequency mode and then go to that stepping item and let's just see what it's set on now. Step frequency. Aha, uh -huh, it's 12.5. So it does look like it makes a difference and therefore I'll set 5 again when I'm, I'm doing it from frequency mode and um, 
let's go back and let's see it looks like it did take it and it held it so maybe uh, you need to do both or maybe it's more important to do those entries into the menu if you want to keep them do them when you're in frequency mode or VFO mode so there's another little housekeeping tip that uh, will probably be important as we get down the road with some of our future programming. Here's a quick graphic representation of what we're going to be doing next which is setting our CTCSS tones for possibly opening a repeater which is often required. The CTCSS encoding is the most often thing that you're going to come across. You probably will not be dealing with DCS so we're just going to go through that. So from your shortcut sheet you can see that it's menu item number 9 which leads you in to the transmitting side of CTCSS. You can also set your radio so that it requires uh, itself to hear a CTCSS encode in order to open its squelch circuit. Uh, that's not normally used in our field but encoding, sending the CTCSS tone code up to the repeater is very common. So that's what we're going to deal with. You can see here that when you go through the menu system, it takes you to the opening screen, the TX CDC here, and then you can drop down into the submenus where you've got two choices, DCS or CTC. That's what you're going to pick is the CTC which will lead you into taking your choices between 50 CTCSS tone code groups going from 67 to 254 uh, 0.1 hertz. You can also turn off the CTCSS S in there. Excuse me for being tongue-tied. So this in the manual is where you find the instructions on working your way through getting that operation accomplished. So that's what we're going to go try and see if we can do it in much the same way that the manual outlines it or if there is some further complications that we're not aware of. We've just had a look at how we're going to go through the CTCSS programming flow and uh, so now we're back here on our frequency channel and we're in frequency mode so if you were if you were in channel 2 with your frequency now let's go back to frequency channel mode and then we're gonna go in and select the appropriate menu item uh, we were on 3 here I just finished setting the squelch level to 3 it was on 5 while we were away so you might want to check that while you're in there and the CTCSS menu is menu item number 9. So we get to number 9, we hit the orange button, and then we select the CTC option. And then we select the CTCSS tone code that we want to use. In this case, I want a 151.4. I hit the menu, and uh, that stores it into memory then I can hit the exit button and now if I hit the push to talk let's go to menu Function channel number two. Channel mode two and let's just see if we hit the push to talk we should see the CT symbol come up in the upper left hand corner and we haven't so that would mean that it's not stored into the memory let's go back over Function to select. frequency, frequency mode, mode and try that again and CT does come up in the upper left hand corner so I would think that now we've got to store that into memory yet again and I'm just wondering what will happen when we try to do that so let's find out together we go as we saw before how we are going to make a um, frequency get stored into memory channel mode is we hit menu and we go to menu item number 19 and um, hit menu again, channel, memory. channel number 2 starts flashing, memory. we hit that again, 
we'll hit the exit button and now we're going to go back over to memory channel mode channel number two is showing and now we're going to hit the push to talk and because I'm not seeing CTCSS showing up in the upper left hand corner it would indicate to me I'm still not getting that successfully into memory so that's something that you want to check on and it's something that I'm going to have to go look up and find out how we're going to get that stored in the memory from this point onward. So we got that problem sorted out and as it turns out if you go back to when we got started mentioning how we had to house clean and delete the memory channels I had to do that again so I had to delete memory channel 2 and when I had CTCSS set for the channel that was in frequency channel mode then I stored that back in their memory channel too and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this now but then when you hit the push to talk you can see the CT come up in the upper left hand corner there so the lesson we take away from that is that um, we need to uh, do all our parameters from the menu before we store that into memory mode. Otherwise, you'll have to delete and do it all over again and store it in again. So that's a good lesson to take away from that and now we know better. Now that we've got the CTCSS set, our hypothetical repeater is going to require us to be narrowband and we're probably on wideband by default. So looking ahead to what we're going to need to do, we see from our little cheat sheet that it's going to be function order they call it here, which I believe is the menu item number, number four. They call it setting transmission. When you bring that up, it will look like that TX set. And then it looks like we're going to need to scroll through five sub menus until we get down to the bottom WN and then if we go over here we can see our two options are going to be wide 25 kilohertz or narrow 12.5 and it tells us that more details are on page 18 of the manual if we go to the manual it's actually page 17 and it's going to walk us through what's available with those settings. Wide narrow is the fifth one down. We go down here and here we go selecting wide narrow function and it tells you the steps to go through. We will press menu and then go number four TX set. Then we're going to get to that window TXP. We keep scrolling down to wide narrow and when we get the one we want on narrow we press menu to confirm and then exit to return to standby so let's go to the radio and see if it will work that way here we are in frequency channel mode and I think we said it was going to be number four did we not and then we hit menu and then we're going to scroll down to wide narrow hit menu again it's on wide we move it to narrow hit menu okay again that saved it and then we hit exit and I see we have an N designation in the upper right hand corner of the screen over the zero and if we hit the push to talk we still got the CTCSS so it looks like now we're transmitting on 155 with CTCSS and it's on narrow band. So we have got our simplex there. If we store that to channel two, we'll have a simplex channel stored in channel two. However, what if we wanted that to be a repeater? Now, our options are, if we did just want that as simplex, I would store this to channel two. It will remain in frequency channel mode, those settings when I go back there, and then I could add the transmit frequency, a unique one, and put that one in memory channel 3. So I've got my simplex 
on two and the matching repeater for that same area on number three, which is the common practice for the way most radios are set up, at least in our neck of the woods. So I'm going to go off and research how to get that transmit frequency in there and uh, see how we go with that. Now all that's left to do is get the transmit frequency in there and uh, we're going to assume that um, what we're going to want to have is let's say 155.550 with CTCSS and the narrow band on there. So remember we had problems with overwriting memory so I think to be safe it's good practice. We're going to go back and delete memory channel 2 because it may not store properly what we're trying to do. So I'm going to go back to memory menu item, sorry, menu item number 20 and I'm going to hit the orange and I'm going to delete channel number 2 and then go back. And now I'm in VFO mode and I've got 155 which is my receive frequency. It's on narrow band and it's still got the CTCSS. So I will now, now that I've got all those things the way I want them in there, um, we were probably okay but just to be sure I'm going to go now and store that into memory channel number two which is menu item number 19 hit the orange button. I'm going to dial in uh, channel number two and then cement, cement that in there, exit out and now uh, we've got the simplex side of things sorted out and I'm going to get my transmit frequency in by just punching it in. I'm in frequency channel mode now and it's one five 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 zero. I believe that's what we wanted. We still have the N up there for narrow band so we know that that's selected. Uh, if we hit the push to talk I see the CTCSS is still working. So now we're going to hit the menu button again and we're, we've got menu channel on there or memory channel on there already selected. And it's flashing on number two again and we hit that again. We exit out of there. Now we're going to go over to memory channel mode by hitting orange and green and we're on channel 2. Now you'll see a change up above where we have the plus minus side right over the third digit which is number 5. That means that there's it's called a split frequency that it's split between the transmit frequency and the receive frequency. We still have an N up there to show that we've got narrow band and when we hit the push to talk we're going to watch for two things that are going to happen. It'll be a different transmit frequency and the CT symbol should still go on the top saying that we are sending out the CTCSS encode. Let's see what happens when we do that. 155.550 and it's narrow band and CTCSS. So we have accomplished that. Now the only thing that may remain here is we are in channel 2. We've got our repeater channel in there. All our parameters have taken hold and we are able to see the frequencies, what they're transmitting and receiving on. So we may want to name that channel as one last thing and don't forget we did set our uh, squelch down to three. It was defaulting to five and if you're traveling through town past a lot of bank machines you might want to have it up around five. If you're up on a glacier somewhere you could probably get away with two or three as long as your avalanche beacon or your camera or your GPS isn't causing interference or intermod with your radio. When I was in university I remember I had a prof that told me that uh, he thought my way of learning seemed to be quite unique amongst all he had seen before. He said that it likened it to me putting myself into a dark room with no light bulbs and throwing myself against all the walls until I finally found the door. He said that apparently in my case it worked but he didn't recommend that as a learning style and I think we can see that illustrated here because what have I just done with one of my unique old guy moments I stumbled across a important little note in the manual where in rather challenging English vernacular 
if you could call it that, it kind of uh, hints at what I had learned by throwing myself against the wall in the dark room. And that is this note here where it says, if the store channels need to set the CTCSS DCSS codes, you should set it before you stored so that you can store into channel with frequency. I think what they're saying there is what we said. You gotta do all those things like uh, delete the memory channel and do it all and then store it. And see again, transmitting store only can store transmitting frequency. Again, so um, hmm, take that for what it is. Manual store in frequency mode only when the channel is empty can it set receiving and transmitting store. I think what they're saying there is delete that channel before you try and store it in the memory. And then last it says the CD's manual store via programming software can also set the functions and parameters. Well that's easy to understand I think. I think what they're saying is is uh, you should buy the programming cable and use the software. Uh, okay. There you go. Now on to what we're doing next and hopefully the final bit which is number 18 down here editing a channel name and um, I've lost my mouse cursor. There it is. I do have my glasses on. Number 18 in the menu shows up as channel name right here. Then you can go over and select step. The channel name make up of A to B 26 letters. I think they're Greek invented an alphabet that had 26 in it as well, didn't they? Anyway, um, let's see where they go with this on page 38 of the manual, which probably will be close to page 38. Oh yeah, page 39. And under the note, speedy switch over frequency mode and channel mode. Um, yeah, see, I don't really get that. That's probably why these tutorials are the next best thing. So, um, again, uh, it looks like, is it the Greek alphabet we're going to use? And channel name should be less than six in length. I think they mean it should be six or less in length when selecting that character means the bit is blank edit method. You can either use the programming software, which is definitely easier, but maybe not always available. Uh, perhaps you own a Mac. Via keypad of transceiver. Uh, editing. At least one channel should have been stored. So we've done that with channel 2. The chan Ah, this is probably an important point to note. The transceiver should be in channel mode. So we, uh, for the first time, we won't be working in frequency mode or VFO mode. We'll be working in memory channel mode. And then when we are, we will edit the channel name. It's kind of like the any tone. You select the character, then you use the down arrow to select the next edit position. And then you work your way through. You get your six digit display or less if that's what you want and um, when you get to where you want to be go through menu 17 to set the display to name oh I see so that's right so you have to tell the radio what what that means is you're gonna tell it via menu number 17 what type of display you want showing when you're using the radio and you can toggle that around by using that menu so sometimes you might want to see your actual frequencies that you're transmitting on to confirm you're on the right ones um, if I would have known this when I had my problem trying to hit the repeater the problem I outline in the tutorial about uh, programming the AnyTone in the field and problems I had trying to change this radio when I discovered I had a wrong tone code I couldn't do it because I didn't know all this stuff uh, 17 would have at least allowed me to see what my frequency was 
and uh, confirm that. So that's what we're going to need to know. Now let's go over to the radio and see if it actually works that way. It may not be as easy as it seems, so be prepared for a little bit of bumbling around. Well, this is going on and on. It's stressing me out. I'm going to need a nap. You're probably not the only one that's wishing this would be over with soon. So let's hope this goes well. We want to edit the channel name. So remember they said we needed to do it from memory channel mode, which is indeed where we left off last time. So that's where we'll start from. We don't have to fumble around and change anything there. We're going to find number 18, which is one less than 19. Channel name. Now, I haven't done this before from here, so maybe we will make these mistakes. So uh, what are we going to call this channel? Whatever is easiest. Uh-huh. So I have no idea why it started to dial that on on the fourth digit, so we'll try moving the I see. The arrow keys. The arrow seems to be moving. There we go. Um, anyway, we've dialed in a bunch of digits there, whatever they are, and um, I kind of fumbled around and moved through them with the arrow keys. So um, you can do the same sort of throwing yourself against the wall, and uh, you've got the basics there of how to get that in. It timed out on me there, so I think I need to go back to menu and pick the channel name again and uh, start over. And it looks like it's, I have no idea why it seemed to go to the third digit and then the fourth, then the fifth, then the sixth. and then it randomly decides to you know which one you're on so the arrows are changing the digit and my dial also seems to be changing the digit but then the dial when I move the dial counterclockwise It seems that the only way I can change the position is to move my dial counterclockwise and then choose my then choose your Yeah oh man. All right. Let's Let's assume that this is the way it seems to work. In order to pick your position, turn your dial counterclockwise. In order to pick your digit, use the up arrow key. Now, uh, in spite of what the manual says, that seems to be about it. And then you got to save it, or it's going to time out like that. So we're back, and uh, up arrow key. There you go. It picked that digit counterclockwise to move to the next one, up arrow key, counterclockwise, up arrow key, counterclockwise, up arrow key, and so on until I get to the end and then I hit menu. And now, let's see what happens if I hit exit, um, and then I go to menu and what did they say? It was 17 for showing how to pick what your display is and uh, we get channel frequency, channel or name, hit that. Channel mode two. And there you go. How about that? In channel number two we now see the name. Now I don't know if we have to restore that again in memory. Let's turn the radio off.
turn it on again. Well, it would appear that uh, we don't need to restore that, that it just gave it that name. And when I hit the push to talk, all the other parameters seem to be the same. So there we go. We have uh, named the memory ACDEFG. And um, in spite of what the manual said, the secret seems to be turn the dial counterclockwise to pick your digit place and then was it the up arrow anyway whatever he said that's what's going to work and um, now all you've got to do is work your way through some of the other memory parameters and to make the best you can out of that manual and you should be able to get the rest of the things you need like how long your backlight stays on and um, Oh, a bunch of other stuff that's that's in that manual there that you can download from the internet. Thanks for watching that. Mr. Deslini, would you like to explain what you're doing right now? God only knows. <laughs> <laughs>